back to week four of the NALCS Summer Split. It's time to get the 4th of July fireworks started with our first match of the day, Curse versus Vulcan. Both of these teams are coming off very successful runs down at MLG Anaheim. Yeah, both of these teams went 2-1 and one over the MLG weekend. Vulcan became the second team to beat Cloud9. They were the aggressors in that game, and they really dictated the pace. Vulcan has also been near the top of the standings for the whole split. Yet no one is really talking about them as one of the best North American teams. And I think a lot of that actually has to do because they're not flashy in their wins. They just take care of business, kill the Nexus. Uh, and it almost keeps them out of the headhunter spot too because how do you not focus on a team that went from the bottom to second and then kind of can sit yeah. there? All the focus was on Good Game University, now Team Coast, because they finished second. Vulcan was in the same spot, and they finished third. Plus, yeah. they won the third-place game against Curse, whereas uh, Good Game University lost the finals to TSM. So they've been on the rise, continue to be on the rise, but they're just moving, sneaky enough to not like get a noticed. Shadow. Yeah. So while Curse started off their MLG adventure by having the first game smited away by NK Inc. and Velocity, they came back big and swept through their next two contests. Curse really played two of their best games of the summer split at MLG. Mm -hmm. uh, their wins were a huge confidence boost, probably for Cop, because anytime Curse struggles, Cop receives a ton of criticism online, but he kept working through all that criticism, and he performed really well at MLG. At the beginning of the summer, he looked weak on the more aggressive champions that Edward was having him play, but at MLG, his Draven play was really key in their win over TSM and Coast. And today, Cop and Curse will need to stay on point against the Vulcan squad that has already beat them twice this summer. And this matchup between these two teams has really been the story of the team's solo laners. Yeah. Uh, Psycho Sid and Mandatory Cloud have dominated in their two matchups. The stat here is 28 kills, two deaths, and 28 assists when you combine their scores together. And then on the other side, with Curse's Nijacky and Voiboy, it, it didn't work out. When yeah. the other guys are 28 and 2, you're not doing too well yourselves. They've been 3, 11, and 10 total. So that kind of points out that even though online was giving Cop all the criticism, it wasn't just Cop's fault when Curse was losing. The whole team had been struggling, and they really need to pick it up if they want to reverse their previous results against Vulcan and keep the momentum from MLG. Well, it seems like they've almost done the right things on the backside. They've definitely mm -hmm. done things behind the curtains to make those changes, and now vlogging them out, we've heard a few of those things. So they're definitely making it present to the fans as well. Yeah, and I think for one of the first times, Curse is supporting each other better internally than they ever have. That's a good Edward point. came out on Facebook. I mean, I guess that's external support as well right, for right. Cop, but even St. Vicious seems to have kind of turned over a new leaf as far as leadership goes, and we'll see if that can carry Curse through after their disappointing start. Absolutely. All right, so now let's take a look at today's lineups as we get into the games. On the blue side, it's Curse. In the top is Voiboy, St. Vicious in the jungle, Nijacky in mid, Cop on AD, and Edward at support. And on the red side, we're going to have Balkan with Psycho Sid in the top lane, X Smithy in the jungle, Man Cloud in mid lane, Zuna on AD carry, and Bloodwater, of course, on support. And before we jump into Champion Select, let's take a look at who you guys think will win this matchup. According to LOL Esports, 66% think that Curse is going to come out on top. Yeah, so the Curse faithful are still strong in this one. Curse yeah. did have the bounce back last week at MLG, but, I mean, Vulcan went 2-1 and one and beat Cloud9, so definite fan favoritism going on there, but I love seeing those stats. <laughs> and as you guys remember, if you're just tuning in and you didn't hear, there were some technical issues today that w some of the players are playing in one of the studio's green rooms, so we won't have the full face cams for our players today. You can see them there speaking with the QC right now, and that's where Vulcan will be playing from. I know Gnome just kind of made a joke on social media that Zuna broke the mic, so he's got <laughs> But that's not the case. Definitely a slightly just... different setting for some of these guys right. coming in. It, it Maybe it'll throw them off a little bit, but Coming off of MLG, they got to learn how to play in different environments, yep. and it's something that is part of being a professional player. One could almost argue that playing in the green room might be a little more relaxing than playing in the blue lights with the giant soundproof headsets on. So That's we'll true. see if, if it has That's any true. impact. I think it'll have very minimal impact yep. because they still have the same setups, same computers are in the green room that we use yeah. on the LCS stage, so it should mostly be the same in the game. It's going. It's, that's one of the big things, is that you can have the same from back to back. It's consistency for the players in that case. Their runes and masteries are already set up. So it's really just the change of the seat. It's like going mm -hmm. from the house to the MLG, like you said. Yeah, or like home to work, laptop to desktop. That's kind of a hard <laughs> one. But these guys, they, they bring their peripherals with them, so it's always the same. So at MLG, we definitely saw a lot of, even Doublelift said, the crowds behind you, Medios mm -hmm. was one to say my, my monitor was shaking. It was kind of crazy. And yeah. a lot of that momentum was one that carried at, at the MDM in Moscow, Gambit to an overall mm -hmm. undefeated weekend. And we saw a comeback. We saw CLG do well. TSM actually went 0-3, and three, which is a huge surprise for a lot of people yeah. on the weekend. So the crowd weighing in big. We'll have to see like those nerves now calm down at the studio again. These guys just have to work off each other's amp. And even in the spring split when we went to MLG Dallas, that was a turning week for a lot of the teams. It was, 
I know for who was it that had the huge turning point? I mean, Chaos had the majority of his dram with TSM back then. Complexity yeah. ended Dignitas' winning streak, and even this week at MLG, COG got their hype back. Maybe Curse turned their season around. A lot happens when you change settings a little bit and then come back because it's almost like a quick little reset of your season, and that's exactly what Curse needs right now. Something else to come in here. I remember, I think it was Saint Stream. You know, people were talking about the LCS and really confident coming from Curse. They're thinking a lot of things from the back or from the spring split. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, Coast is doing well right now, but we had a bigger win streak than that. We've been yep. in a position where we were going harder and going stronger, and they're trying to find that again. So these the things that the little inklings that are in the back of Cur Curse's mind, those are the ones they're working off of, remembering that they were the ones that were headhunted last. Uh, and the last win. Split. And the win that. Curse had against Coast in the last game of MLG was the most convincing win they had of the year. So of the 10 games they played, their best game was their most recent game, which is always what you want. You want to continually get stronger throughout the season. Obviously, you don't want to start off the season really weak and then work your way up to like above average because Curse is shooting to be the best team, but at least they're on the right track. So again, if you're just joining us, we're getting ready to jump into Curse versus Vulcan. Let's talk a little bit about these teams, what we've mm -hmm. seen a lot. Obviously, Psycho Sid in the top versus Voy Boy. Pretty sure we're going to see an Elise ban for these guys coming out. Yeah, Elise has been a dominating pick for Psycho Sid, and then Voy Boy can pick it on the off chance. Voy Boy played a lot more of it over in the spring split, but he's died off a yep. bit on his picks before. And that's actually a matchup that has not went as expected, because everyone considers Voy Boy like the 1v1 master, and Psycho Sid, like most of Vulcan, doesn't have as much fanfare, but he has done extremely well against Voy Boy. One of the reasons I feel like Psycho Sid has like, small fanfare is, for the most part, Vulcan used to force the 1v2s because right. they really trusted Psycho Sid to not die in the lanes and then just go and split push and just kind of be a separate entity. So he doesn't really seem like he's doing too much in a game because Vulcan channels the majority of their farm onto Zune and Mandatory Cloud. And we all know about Man Cloud. Yeah, Mandatory Cloud's the one. You know, we gave him so much guff. Right in the beginning of the spring split, we just kept going at him, and then he was the one to come out. We kind of said the same thing mm -hmm. about Zuna, but it's the AD carries that really make him shine, you know, whether or not he plays that. So yeah. for Mandatory Cloud to have Zareth, to have his Jace, all those things that just on the top of his tier that nobody wants to focus out besides the Jace, right? But then you leave him with Zareth, you leave him with Karthus, whatever he can get is usually... Something he can come back from 0-4 on is what we've seen in the bottom lane. And talking about a limited champion pool for Man Cloud, it doesn't exist. Right. Right. He he plays a diverse enough amount of champions. We talked a whole bunch back in the day about him being this, man, Man Cloud's so underrated. It's like eventually he's going to be appropriately rated. And I think we're at that point right now, especially from the pro teams. We're saying that Vulcan doesn't have the fanfare, but the teams definitely respect them. We talked to Cloud9, we talked to everyone else, like, who are you worried of? They might say TSM, COG, but they're all, they always say, like, Vulcan. Those guys play really solid, they have good game planning, Man Cloud is a beast in mid, and that's what they're worried about when they're playing. And you gotta remember, this is CLG Black, pretty much, right? A team that yeah. Hotshot made, Hotshot brought up, figured out that these players had potential, and he's usually been quite good at that in the past. So these guys still carrying that teamwork, and that's something you don't see. People switch in out a lot. Yeah. It's obviously not the same, but to hold as a team that long means you have some super good chemistry. Exactly, and that's a really good point about team synergy because even though Kurtz seems like they've been together for, for longer right now with the swap of Edwin and Kopp playing new AD carries, that's kind of two people that are playing slightly new things. But as far as Vulcan goes, especially when Bloodwater joined again, those guys have really cohesive yeah. communication and they know how to work with themselves through losses because when CLG Black initially came, they weren't exactly a dominant team, but now they're becoming quite good. Figuring out where they need to go, what moves need to happen, the Draven coming out along with the Nunu for the side of Vulcan. Looks like Elise may pass by. Maybe I was just getting ahead of myself. Well, yeah, Elise yeah. could Elise could fall by, but that's in small part because A, Nunu's banned every game. Yes. Cop actually drew a Draven ban, which... Cop's got to pat himself on the back for that one. He's be like, good job, man. I learned Draven. Now it's feared. And it'll be interesting to see if Cop has been practicing other things at Draven. He's like, I'm going to play this. There's no way these guys are going to ban Draven against me. It'll be fine. <laughs> and then, boom, it just comes out. So obviously the Elise is available for these guys, but there's a lot more. There's still Twisted Fate as well. And even Shen is something Curses went with the first pick four before. Definitely a lot longer than any of the picks we've seen at MLG. It looks like everybody's getting back into the swing of things and figuring out what was happening on the off weekend. Kennen banned, Asandra banned out. So it looks like heavy initiation could be coming in from Curse that they don't want broken up here by those picks. Yeah, that's the twisted fate yep. for Nijaki. So 
I think he's going to be pretty happy on that. We've seen a lot of Twisted Fate play in North America ramping up, even mm -hmm. with the Twisted Fate nerfs. They're still picking him really, really frequently. And, well, the other picks we were talking about, by the way, <laughs> Shen and Elise, these guys know their champion pools. And that's something that people actually talk about when they play against Vulcan. It's really hard to pick around them because they actually have very diverse champion pools, and they'll take your stuff away. And besides the bands, these aren't really two champions that we outside, you know, Curse goes for. Yeah, Boy Boy plays Shen. He did, as we said, he's not going to carry the game on this Shen. It almost did with <laughs> a back did. tour 5-0. Yeah. But it's not the high priority for, for Boy Boy, right? He likes to fight. He likes to go in. He didn't want to fight on that Shen in the late game. He wants to fight all the time. Yeah, and I wonder what Boy Boy's <laughs> going to pick to fight Shen, because Shen is That's a true. tanky man in lane. He's very hard to aggress against. Saint had the early lock in of Nautilus here, which actually tells me that Saint's going for a lot of aggressive ganks early. We talked earlier about Saint always going for Nautilus when the game's really on the line. He does it at All-Star Games. He's done it in the playoffs. Like, he does he does that when it really matters. And he did it last week at MLG as well. Definitely an effective jungler form. It's allowed him to get back into the mix of when he was playing Jarvan in the spring split, mm -hmm. having the hand in first bloods Holy for a curse. Holy crap. That did get locked in. Jackie's coming out <laughs> with the Swain. That's going to be top boy boy on Swain. Yeah. Actually. Right, right. This is going way back, by the way, to... Uh, this is the last time I remember boy boy having an interaction with Swain, which is why I'm going way back in my memory here. It was 2011 at I Am New York at Comic-Con. And boy boy was like, this. Uter Top is so strong. Nothing counters it. I'm going to do it. And he picked Uter Top against Fnatic. And x Peke picked Swain and destroyed us. This is back when I was still on, on Dignitas. So, so he took your Udyr away? No, yeah, he took my Udyr away. I, get, <laughs> I, I allowed it because he, he said how strong it was. Uh, we'll be able to get back into champs like real soon. Had a quick drop out there, but the Swain is in, I feel like. The Swain is in. And I want to see him against Chen. That's going to be dangerous. Jackie said lagged out. Yeah. But we'll see. <laughs> Jackie's we like, we lagged. Man, Cloud's like, no, you pick Swain. But we have seen Swain. That's That was completely happening. Damn it. And it might. Damn it. But no, it he did. Like, he, like, locked it in. There's proof on that. That's. It happened. This is a tricky situation <laughs> right here. In all seriousness. They're co they got you on a Kobe line right now. Yeah, They're they do. Because <laughs> I went so in-depth onto that one. I was like, this is genius. Boy Boy's known this for two years, and he's breaking it out now. So, okay, they... so let's match that up, right? If yeah. they take Elise into the jungle for a smithy. Okay. Right? And they put Shen top. Well, that's that's just what they're probably doing, I think. Well, how's, that, how's that match up against the Swain if the Swain is Oh, if, is, if the Swain is Shen top. I don't think it's a good matchup. I also don't think we're seeing Swain anymore, <laughs> which makes me really sad. It it would be a good good matchup. I gotta rejoin the lobby real Make sure fast. Should we hop into this match? In yeah. So, so we did yeah, see the TF picked matchup. out because the shield of of Shen will just totally tank through a, most bird. of the damage from from the E, the torment on Swain, is what most people max because oh, just the dot damage. A lot of them run like AD or just like split pen on Swain or like thirty offense because it amps all your damage and you just throw the E on them and like run at them throwing auto attacks. It's actually it's actually pretty good. It's it's pretty terrifying. I don't like Swains. Yeah. Birds. Birds everywhere. They made a movie about that. <laughs> it was not good. All right, so we're waiting for these guys to get back into the game. Looks like we're getting cursed back in. Jackie, like he said, he had a little bit of a problem with his client as he was mm -hmm. going to get that lock in. We'll have to see what it really was. Twisted Fate and Nautilus on one side. Shen and Elise coming out for Vulcan before they locked in their picks. And the Jace was banned. So we may, yes. s may s no, I don't know, may see a Zareth. I, that would leave Mancloud on the back line with a Shen Elise. I don't know if he'll pick that for this match. The Zareth would be pretty good against Twisted Fate. But it's against TF, yeah, you can lock him. When he's he probably not going to go with something like that. I'd expect him to go with someone who can maybe match Twisted Fate's roam or at least apply a lot of threat to Karthus. Twisted Fate immediately in lane. Karthus might work because he'd be able to farm and at least globally help out a little bit whenever he tried to teleport in. Plus, Karthus has been a pick man cloud has kind of fallen back on in their tough games. But we're over-speculating here. Yes. Going to start making some bad predictions. No, never. It's a good thing we're back in the game. It doesn't happen. Here come the good predictions as we hop into champion select. I bet they're going to ban Jace last. I bet you they're not going to pick Swain. And it's a sad pick. We'll have to see. These yeah. lock-ins should be quite fast as we get our first match of this 4th of July party underway. Ah. If you're one to celebrate 4th of July, enjoy yourself with some sparklers and some burgers as you watch. Yeah, unfortunately, sparklers are illegal in the city of Los Angeles to have indoors. So, otherwise, I'd be having a party right now. Yep. But, all right. These look like the more real picks of Curse. Hopefully, this is a thing that Jackie does. Is Sony even, like, close to Swain on the champion long enough? 
I just I just don't see how it's the like S too SWSO. over. The SWSO. I don't know, man. That's some serious leg right there. So the Sona is locked in. So Edward mm -hmm. gonna be when he uh, locked onto the Sona. Very good Sona. We've mentioned multiple multiple times. Alex Each was more the one to say Edward play Sona because it works yes. for the composition. And that's what he fell back onto last week as well at MLG. He was like, fine, I will play the Sona, even though I would rather play <laughs> Roaming Blitzcrank. It'll happen. But he, he'll, he'll go and play the Sona. The interesting thing here, though, is because Curse was so worried about banning out, I'd say just like the AoE crowd control, that they've left open Tristana, which for all the teams that were trying to scout Vulcan way back in the playoffs of the spring split, kind of identified Zuna's Tristana as the thing you have to do to beat Vulcan. But there's too much on the board for Vulcan nowadays. They've increased their champion roster so widely and had so many threats that something's going to get through. I, I had to, yeah. With with an AD carry ban at them, they had to have considered Tristana and must be pushing it aside for just a thought that they know they can take the lane. Maybe if it doesn't have a Thresh. Yeah. Specifically as well, if uh, Cop stays with an aggressive AD, even though the Draven was banned out against him, the next thing that he would go for, he played some Vayne or even some Twitch, is something that's just really strong for him. Like, he's not going with the Misfortune anymore. We think. Maybe right. he's going to throw back. We were talking at MLG about how Cop, he's either got his Ezreal, which is his old play style, or the non-mobile, like, hyper carries that he's wanting right. to try to pick now. So we're going to see if the Tristana pick or the Draven Man has thrown him off any of those. But I guess, like, the non-mobile hyper carries would be this Kog'Maw, the Twitch, and the Vayne. Kog'Maw would be quite a scary pick if that... Zyra's going into the bottom lane here. And actually, I haven't seen Bloodwater play Zyra in quite a while. And maybe he has, but I haven't got to cast this. So this should be quite interesting if that is his. No, it's because he picks Sone and Thresh all the time. Yeah. Like, or even Nami sometimes, right? right? So at least he's used to having a lot of those skill shots. And it is a very strong disengage champion. That's also assuming that that's not Mancloud. Pulling right, a fast one, right, going yeah. Mid. But Zyra is one of the most difficult champions in the game to dive in against and curse usually loves running same fishes as Void Boy is like dive buddies. So they're trying to block against that a little bit, which actually explains the Vladimir pick a little bit better because that's range from Void Boy and it's easier to get it on Zyra. Now it looks like they will choose to put up in that top lane. Not a Swain, but a Vladimir. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's it's worth it. And then Cop went with Caitlyn as well. So right, keeping the safety there. Officer that, Caitlyn. I think, I think the Kog'Maw would have been a little too scary for him to choose in that lane if they were to match it up. Probably because it's against a Lee Shen, and that's two people that can get on yeah. top of him immediately. He probably wanted to go with the non-mobile, like Hyper Carry, and the rest of the team was like, nah, Jackie, you're going to die immediately. And he probably ended up switching Especially off Especially with a Sona reason. in lane. A Sona Cog, you just got two plushies kind of running around in a lane. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see this. Man Cloud, is this yours? Are you, besides Vile Rose, the only one to play? Zyra as a mid laner here. And no. No surprises Not today, Not a surprise there. July 4th, no surprises. Not in that one. Some fire Can't even see fireworks because he didn't pick Kogma. All right, so <laughs> Vulcan's team comp looks actually really strong. I can see them having tons of dive synergy plus the late game carries. I think this is on Curse, actually, to put enough pressure on the lanes to disrupt Vulcan from their late game game. And that's that's typically what Vulcan's done. They have Curse's number, they just try to take it to late game, and then they get there and win. Pretty great compositions, like you said, for both. I'm looking to see how this matchup will run. What lanes are going to be is this focus for Saint? These are very mm -hmm. hard lanes to gank in general. I think he's going to have to try and focus Man Cloud as much as possible because Twisted Fate can maybe line some things up with his gold cart stun and just maybe allow St. Fitch to go in for some of these ganks. But as far as that goes, it could be counter jungling or he could try to help cop out. I think mid's his best option. So mid and counter jungling, kind of a focus for Saint on this mm -hmm. one. All the other lanes, not lacking CC. They'll definitely go into that late game and provide a lot of damage, but it will be harder to get those ganks off. So Saint, maybe not having the first hand in blood, or first blood this time on this one. We'll have to see if the strength and power of Vulcan in their squad. You got Shen, Elise in that jungle, mm -hmm. Bloodwater on the bottom, so we may see something fast from them. And we've seen Saint typically have huge impact on First Blood. It fell off for a little bit, but it could be on its way back if Curse is coming back in the season. This is a very big match for them because Vulcan has been the team that's had Curse's number. They beat Curse in the playoffs the last split. They beat them near the end of last last split in the regular season. And they're already 2-0, trying to go 3-0 against them only in Week 4. So Curse... They got to turn themselves around against Vulcan if they want to turn themselves around as a team. And we've been talking about gaining momentum is really in the favor of Curse right now. They're finding it. Having momentum is something Vulcan loves when they win. That's yeah. what pushes them over the edge. Curse is coming off of Team Solo mid's win 
on this. Vulcan's coming off of beating Cloud9, so both of them mm -hmm. are running at full force right now. It's nice. It's first it's game. Huge. That's a first lot game. of momentum coming into this one. First game is definitely going to set the bar. I think we're going to get a little MLG action that we saw, and everybody's going to really have to follow up with that action as well. Yeah, the 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 environment is definitely a lot different for these guys because that was one of the that was the loudest MLG crowd I've ever been uh, a part yes. of. So and the players <laughs> definitely still so ringing. It was one of the. It's like no, it was the best. And coming into this in the studio environment, even though you know they got. Now that the practice room, they got all the snacks laying around, but it's just different, mm. different stuff. All right, and we adjust. are going to soon be on to the Rift, but us first. So we're going to see what this pause is all about and then get this match underway. Obviously, that's what happens after a pause. We're going to mm -hmm. get it rolling. But that level one, I don't think really is any going to be, be anything but wards. What we've seen lately, there yeah. has been a bit of a focus on red, but that's just to have vision on the jungler after a good amount of time. Yeah, surprisingly, if nothing happens here, Bloodwater didn't start the game with any pink wards whatsoever. I think we're going to have to, unfortunately, have a slight more delay before we can get into this awesome yep. game. But we do have, yeah, I guess we just have a remake. And one of the big things about that, though, is obviously when they're changing around spots so much, some things don't get necessarily set. We can't, we can't punish necessarily a player if... They're told to move a room, and then like a room page right, isn't set right. just right. So that's the reason we're probably going to have this remake. Absolutely. So th what happens is, you know, the players can get a little complacent. Things are set up quite nice for them. Every time they mm -hmm. sign into a computer, everything you have is loaded right there, just how it was yes. last game. So you want to get in, you log in, you're like, yeah, I'm set from last time. Happens. We're going to get the room page changed. We're going to get back into the game. No problem, no foul, no harm. So coming in, our first match, like we said, is going to be Curse versus Vulcan, and we've been just building it up because Curse beat TSM. Vulcan beat Cloud9. Vulcan beat Cloud9 in the beginning, and it was very Cutie pie asked what we saw Cutie pie do if you were watching the Dignitas matchup where he mm. walked into the tri bush, was forced to flash, but it didn't happen so well for Sneaky. He flashed no. over the wall, came back to lane level 3 to level 1. I think he was level 1, and then Zuna and Bloodwater went at him giving yeah. them the cloud nine medicine over and over and over and of just chokehold strategy. And specifically, this is talking about the Vulcan versus cloud nine game right. that happened at MLG. Uh, the thing about Vulcan so, much, so far is that they're constantly going for the late game. So when they were able to get an early edge on cloud nine, they really just hammered it home. And that was, that was like, even though that it had a lot of back and forth, it was Vulcan-esque at the very start of it. Because when Vulcan gets an edge, they generally just hold it and take it as far through as possible and that's it's not flashy they'll win a game slow they'll easily grind one out against anyone and it works it, and you can say grind it out against anyone it's counter logic gaming when you have that when it's pretty much when we kind of depicted and notified or not notified depicted or saw that mm -hmm. that lead that vulcan had that they never let go even at two to three k was what would always win them the game it gave them confidence objective control and just fight power into the late part of the game and to do that against counter logic gaming consistently mm -hmm. especially last split you know really showed that they are a team to be reckoned with yeah it's it's impressive the growth of some of these other teams and i guess we we're still remaking this game guys i'm sorry to everybody <laughs> The growth of the teams like Vulcan, or even if we look over at Europe, how we have alternate and MIM at like the top of the standings, uh, a lot of it has to do with them being within this competitive environment so much. Now Vulcan having a gaming house, they wouldn't have been able a team like that wouldn't have been able to have a gaming house a year ago. But now that they're competing in this league week to week, and there's scrim practice and mm -hmm. like a competitive infrastructure forming up. Right. And the fact that they had a whole split already to be in it, you're really starting to see some of the rewards of that. I feel like the quality of the games in North America is definitely getting higher. Uh, the excitement level is definitely getting higher, that's for sure. And we're only going to have to keep watching the games to figure out who the top couple teams in North America are. And that's one of my, f uh, just a uh, latter part of what you were mentioning, everybody getting better is one of my favorite parts of the split, the LCS, and what happens. Mm -hmm. Weekly schedule has been one of the things noted by the players is this has ramped up my game so much, this structure, having this. And even when I talked to Lauda Mortis, you know, he said that the LCS get, feels like it gives them such an advantage when they're mm -hmm. playing in matches. Obviously, unfortunately, they did lose to FXO just due to Those great were play. Really good games. But they were super mm -hmm. good games, and it just shows how much want, how much passion everybody wants to get in here and really what it takes to do it and it shows whenever you hear these guys talk about it whether you see the passion within the teams and i actually wonder um 
this is this is probably getting a little off topic, but I wonder how long these pro players are going to be able to stick with this thing because I feel like this is one of the highest possible stress jobs you can have. Uh, I talked about it a little bit last week, but Toys, recent retirement yeah. uh, from TPA because, A, he was, wasn't was happy with what he was doing anymore because he had he was having to take sleeping pills to fall asleep, stress. He had carpal tunnel syndrome from practicing like 10 hours a day without, you know, ergonomically correct seating right, arrangements. Right. And we've already seen a couple players retire, like Hotshot GG, after like three years, is like, well, I I've went and done it now. And I wonder how long these guys can keep doing it. Because we have veterans like St. Vicious and Voy Boy who have been in this for so long, and they continue to tick by. And it's it's really interesting for me to, to watch as this sport progresses, you know, were the guys at the start the best? Or are right. all these newcomers going to come up? And if the newcomers do come up, are they going to be able to stick with it? It's a totally new and, experience. And, it, like, you know, people may be wondering or thinking to themselves, you know, a video game, that's not too stressful. But there is a constant, constant bar there for you to perform. Yeah. People always nagging on you. People saying this, saying that. You know, if something happens consistently, people let you know it happens. So the, the players are always playing with that, including all the things we talk about, moving roles. Not moving roles, but moving moving their stations, the environment they play in, mm -hmm. having communication of new players on the team and the cohesiveness as it's brought out in the beginning of the team. All of these things just play on their mind. And you're right, how long yeah. can it go for? Because a lot of them have done it for so long and it seems to wear out. Hotshot pulled back because he said, you know, the passion that I want to give isn't there anymore you know I've kind of found that the passion was already had by them so he wants to give that open spot to new players who want to grab it again and if you're a new player you definitely have to have thick skin that's one thing for absolute certain even the teams that have been together forever the new CLG uh, first couple of weeks people were like you know they shouldn't have done this you know CLG's right. dead maybe you know they should they've never figured out CLG's always been been foolish cop every time it was doing poorly teams were saying you know, when's Curse going to replace Cop? How is this going to be working out? And right. you have to be able to stick through these things. It's We'll see if teams get better at it, better at dealing with it, better structures. But we've got to remember, a lot of these guys are really young. And it's even for people that aren't really young, it's really hard to deal with someone on the Internet saying you're terrible. Yeah, That's not an easy thing to take. It doesn't happen to many people. No, no one gets to read that that frequently. So it's it's something to adjust to. It's, it's crazy how coordinated actually five of these guys can be mm -hmm. with with what they do with with what you would think if you saw them on the street be like oh they play video games they really just play to play but they absolutely take it as a job and that's why they're here in the north american lcs yeah and there's some cheers going off we're almost into the game <laughs> the players <laughs> like yeah we're about to go we're gonna play some league of legends to give you a quick recap on this i feel like vulcan picked that oriana shen tristana like late game try to win the lane team comp, whereas Curse picked Twisted Fate. So it's going to be a lot of Jackie trying to go around and shutting down the guys on Vulcan during this game if everything works out and we can get into this one. So with with a pick like Jackie, right? So Jackie trying to go around, shut down everything. When that goes awry, when do you start, if you haven't already, lich baning that TF and getting him on the turrets? Well, it's actually one of the things that you can't just switch to if you're Twisted Fate. Well, right, because why. if you start losing, the Lich Bane, you're never going to get to a turret. <laughs> Lich Bane is something you build on TF if you're trying to pull ahead, not if you're trying to come back. I feel like if he's trying to come back, it's either the Zhonyas or the Rabadons because he's going to want to either initiate in a fight Make and then an try to disappear or just clear waves forever until they're stalling for late game. So in this match, if they fall behind, I feel like he's going to go Zhonyas because uh, they don't want it to go super late game. When we look at the potential of these teams, if they're ever brought to their base, good siege clear by both, so it's pretty much going to be the long roll if they get to the front door of either base. The laning phase mm -hmm. is really going to obviously dictate what happens, but who can get that first tower down and start to push. We've got some cool statistics that we've had out, and you know we'll start to bring them out as well as they start to build more and more and become relevant. But it'll yeah. be awesome to see you know, that first inhibitor turret, 75% of those teams, or 73% of those teams will win the game. Yeah, first Baron, I think, was one of the more significant stats. Surprisingly, uh, first Dragon and first Turret, since often they're traded right at the start of the game, right. didn't show too much of an impact. I think they were both around 50%. But as we get more of those stats, we're going to bring them in in time. I'm not just going to give all the <laughs> stats right at the start. That would ruin the suspense. Stat works. Yeah. That will be fun, actually. I kind of want some stat works. So we will have this match underway. Looks like we are going to be getting in Curse versus Vulcan. This 4th of July game will go off. We've been lighting the fuse a few times. This is the one it's going to go. Yeah, it keeps getting stomped out. Somebody's hitting it. There's a spider <laughs> in the studio. Just not again. Not, not again. again.
I thought I heard that was a scream. That was Reggie running around. <laughs> He's somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. So coming in, the no uh, junglers again, Elise mm -hmm. versus Nautilus. I thought Elise would be banned. I was wrong. My crystal ball's foggy. Jackson. But it was picked. It was picked. So, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It's getting a little love. Yeah, at least it's... It's kind of the same thing. I'll take that. Yeah. Put it in my... It was near the top. It's just one of them's in the game, <laughs> and the other one is not. All right, we'll see what we got going into the matchup. With this, as we already talked perhaps. a little bit, perhaps, talked yeah. about the compositions. We have the Shen, Oriana, and you said Elise coming in with that mm -hmm. Protect comp. Will they even be worried about a Twisted Fate Ultimate? That's just kind of group and rinse and repeat. You're always worried about a Twisted Fate Ultimate. Like, you can do things to make it less effective, and the Elise is definitely one of those things. One of the highlights for last week at MLG, actually, was when Meteo stunned a Twisted Fate as he was porting in, perfectly before he could get anything off. Oh my off. god, that cocoon. Uh, yeah, Meteos' so cocoon. And then later, <laughs> when Hyde tried to go in to pull off the Messiah's <laughs> on his trick, he got stunned instantly twice in a row. So even if you have things to counter it, it's going to create action, and teams are going to be going for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to the Rift. Rivington the third and Jap bringing you this first match of this 4th of July game day. Eight awesome games all today. Vulcan versus Curse to start it off. We said Curse just beat TSM last weekend. Vulcan beat Cloud9, the top team in the league. With that momentum, they're now to face off on the Rift. And they're walking right into each other right now. Vulcan's going clean through Ward, and Curse is trying to lay a trap around the corner here. Jackie trying to lock gold. There's the gold card coming out. It's going to be Bloodwater Ooh. first. Can they lock him down? They give it to Bloodwater. It's not going to be the flash. He actually blows it and then goes down. Nijacky could go down as well. The second kill coming in for Zuna. Saints all safe, picking up one on the Zuna side. just stays in. There's Zuna getting a kill on himself. <laughs> going down again. There's two coming in on the side of Curse. Vulcan looks to clean up one more. Can Edward get away? Nick Smith, he throws out the auto attacks. It's not going to be enough. He gets under the bush. He needs Edward's more. probably going down, though. Edward's trying to make it away. It looks like he will go down to a turret here. Nick Smith, he's going to pick up. No. It's no. his own turret. That's he's his safe. Own turret. I can't even tell which side of the jungle they're on. This is one hell of a way to start on a game. They're still fighting. Oh, my gosh. Man Cloud going in, trying to bait it out. Saint going to take a few more shots. Oriana not in range, so he doesn't have to worry about too Jackie's much. Jackie's back. Oh, my gosh. Here comes Smithy going down. He's got 115 HP left on him. One more hit. The auto attack from Boy Boy picks up the kill. Five kills in a minute and 40 seconds. Well, they were so tired about the, the delay. They're like, we have to fight right away. We're not allowed to lane anymore. We have to fight each other right now. Three to two in this already. That gives Curse a 600 gold edge to start the game because they got the first blood and the advantage in kills. That fight was really close to being turned around by Vulcan at one point, but because it was in Curse's jungle, Nijaki came back from his respawn base all the way back to the fight, got the stun, and finished off the third kill. There aren't many times when you fight twice at level one, Jap. That's not a timer you're usually waiting to come yeah. back up. It's not a guy with home guards. But to get back in the fight, doing a very good job. And that's a 700 gold lead to start off the game. And two kills to Boy Boy, which says to Vulcan immediately, we're going to 1v2 that guy. Because if they put him straight up against Psycho Sid, I feel like Boy Boy would bully that lane a huge amount right from the start. But interestingly enough, Boy Boy only bought a Vision Ward and a couple extra potions. He doesn't have a huge subset of items quite yet. So it'll give him a bit of an, a lead onto his... He's going to go for that Wraith Spell Vamp Spirit yep. Stone item, but it doesn't actually seem like it'll have a huge impact early. Zuna got level 2 off this already, and Bloodwater knows with that, it's level 3 in the lane, they can just sit there with the 3 abilities. Smithy won't be up or to the bottom lane to help it too soon. We see St. Vicious won't be up to the top lane to help either, so they may just be going to the lanes to soak up experience as they do. Yeah, so another byproduct of the level 1 fight with St. Vicious is that as he's clearing his jungle, he's just walking through a whole bunch of wards. Plus, whenever you have a high kill level one fight where since people were dead, they're going back to shop anyway, everyone gets to buy wards on top of their starting goods. So it's increasingly difficult for any jungler to find a path, which is why we had X Smithy just sitting bottom lane because he knows how many wards are out and he knows a gank won't work. And we got double wards, got one coming in for Man Cloud in mid. Bloodwater and Zuna staying safe up top with their wards. St. Vicious force or seeing now the jungler, he's going to go ahead and grab up some wraiths. No, just work. Yeah, he's a little bit scared of Man Cloud right now because he, he doesn't want to tank too much wraith damage. But another byproduct of this is Jackie is pushed back in the lane, so Saint wouldn't have that much backup. That's why he had to burn his smite and get out of there. 
Pretty even level four is in mid. Good poke coming from Matt Cloud. Looks like he's getting levels on the Q, actually. So he wants ball movement over that quick W damage in lane. It's always a choice for Orianna whether right. you go Q or W, but most Orianas I've seen max the Q just because it's the persistent spam and threat it creates in the lane. Really messes with your positioning. Good lockdown. Saint gets some dot damage from his W onto Zuna. Zuna's only forced to jump out. So showing presence in lane, giving Boy Boy a little bit of health here. And it looks like he's going to stay for the long haul. I think he's just trying to match what X Smithy is doing right now. Yep. When he did that gank in mid lane on Man Cloud, he realized kind of how many wards there were on the map and how fruitless it was going to be to roam around and gank aside from the occasional, like, two damage you put down on someone. He'd rather just stay in Harasu. Using those double buffs to great extent. He's trying to get that. Grievous wound down so he can't get his heal. Zuna very low at the turret though. Not gonna have too much trouble last sitting here, but they are giving him some good harass. And Voiboy Boy went with Flash and Ghost. It's very rare you see two movement summoner spells on a champion, but Vladimir is one that kind of works with it. Voiboy's one of the few people who likes Ghost, but he opted to have the Flash as well. That means that Zuna can stick around at lower health in that lane because the kill threat from Voiboy Boy isn't as high. Nick Smithy taking some good poke down in that bottom lane. Cop putting a few extra tags on the Psycho Sid. They make sure this wave is pushed. Gonna go ahead and somewhat freeze it. Yeah, and with all this action, the game has definitely calmed down. Oh yeah. Vulcan's trying to calm it down because they realize they came out on the short end of that level one stick. The minion kills in the lane are pretty even for the most part. Obviously, Sam just has a few more minion kills in next myth because he didn't start supporting lane as quickly, but it looks like a fairly slow opening actually. Trying to see who would have the advantage of what moves may try to be made. Maybe he has some flash blown in the top. We still have Zunas up. Nobody has blown pretty much anything. Saint's flash was blown in that engagement. He's going to have that in at least a minute. So we'll see if he tries to go for anything. Super flash pull. But right now, I don't think he's got a lane to do that in. Not yet. If anything, it's Nijaki's lane. Or. Yeah, again, mid. Nijaki's going to try to gank top because they could turn a 2v3. I know Zuna and Bloodwater have felt pretty safe with all of this as they're trying to push back Boy Boy, knowing that since Boy Boy had two kills, they have to shut him down. So it'll be interesting to see if if Curse tries to snowball Boy Boy's lane with Twisted Fake Ganks. And here's the play of that ward that I believe it was Colby talking about, that mid ward. So the tri bush is more effective or the river bush is more effective. They saw Saint coming up and that really helped the Smithy to be safe on this. It just told them don't tower dive, man, because <laughs> Saint Vicious is probably in the turret waiting for it. But even that turret hasn't taken that much damage early on. Looks like Curse is holding this one off pretty well, and they've actually extended their gold lead an extra 200 or 300 or so since that level one win. St. Vicious still forced to be in this top lane. So looks Smithy's gonna do the same thing. No focus towards that mid lane. That's 57 to 54 CS. Yes, you were saying earlier, it's quite even all around, 56 to 53. Those kills really just set each other, set these guys up for a, a safe lane phase. It was so much to do with the wards. All, like, a right. couple things can happen with level one fights. You can either burn everyone's summoner spells, and then everyone runs to lane right away, and then ganks happen all the time. Early game kills are everywhere. But when people get a bunch of kills level one on both sides, everyone just over wards and then plays passive because they don't have summoner spells. <laughs> and I think that's what we saw in this game. Is he trying to come down that ward? Playing a crucial role once again. Head out. Let's see if Man Cloud already placed that ward down in mid, keeping tabs on Nijaki as he is level seven. They want to make sure they know where he's going. Right now, he's sitting quite far off the turret, but no lanes making a move for him to really get in right now. Everybody's slowly feeling this one out. I feel like our dragon is going to be where we get the fight. And I feel like Curse is starting to win these lanes a little bit more. The big reason I say that is the turret discrepancy between Boy Boy's lane and Psycho Sid's lane is actually getting pretty high. Whoa. But Boy Boy's going in for a fight right now. Three Boy Boy gang. locks it down, throws down the pool. He tries to get that slowdown. A very nice job. Nijack, he comes in as well. But it's going to be Zuna jumping in. He goes Kamikaze oh. on the fight. He takes down Boy Boy. May actually make it out of this one. Nijack, he looks to take some good damage, but he throws down the cleanse. He gets hit up by Man Cloud. They get the kill, and it's two coming in for Vulcan. And right as I was saying Vulcan wasn't winning that top lane compared to the bottom lane, they counter the gank perfectly. St. Fishes is able to escape through the shockwave, but the Shen hitting six and not being interrupted since Edward could not do it yet, since he was not six on Sona, really turned that fight. It let Zuna get aggressive, gave him another kill, and is most likely going to grant Vulcan that turret. Wow, great, great pressure coming out of this. The ace in the hole shows Xmithy that he is being watched. 
And it looks like he may have to get his smite down off of this, which is down. So the execute is all he has. Psycho Sid trying to come in for a little bit of buddy work. It looks like they'll be able to grab this for Oriana. Yeah, Curse is trying to be as annoying and possible as possible, but once they realized Man Cloud was probably coming over, they had to get out of there. It was a makeup almost for saying, sorry that Chen came and won the other fight for you guys. We're gonna do something bottom, but they weren't able to. So that is still a great play for Vulcan. And Vulcan, after being down about 900 gold, finds a 200 gold lead. And this is really where they like to sit pretty. It looks like that Blade of the Rune King is going to be finished up quite soon for Zuna. A good kill interaction for him up top. Leaves him at 2-1-2 and two coming into 10 minutes. And it's going to be to, it looks like, a Bloodthirster that's going to come out. Or probably Infinity Edge after those Zerker yeah. Greaves, rather. And after level 1 did not go as planned at all for Vulcan, the last eight minutes or so have actually gone quite according to plan, and they're going to continue to do that. We talk about how Vulcan likes to win. Zuna get as a late game AD carry. Mandatory Cloud just be awesome, as he's doing with Oriana right now, farming up a Storm 2 on 1. And then Psycho Sid just be there on the side, split pushing and being a thing. And like all of those things are working for them right now, despite what happened at level 1. So here coming in the build for Jackie at 10 minutes. He goes straight for the Sheen after his ring, down 0, 2, and 2. Just feeling that it's going to have to be the objectives for them. He's going to be trying to push some turrets with that fairly quickly. That looks to me like he's going to do the Lich Bane Zonny's Hourglass build. I wonder if he's going to change that around at all. Sometimes you see just the Sheen picked up by Damage Tia. In lane. Because it's really nice since his burst combo is so short. It's just a card right. and his throw cards that the Sheen can add to that. It gives him a little bit of extra mana flow. It kind of tells he's going Lich Bane, but it, it's not 100%. Look at this Vulcan just seeping in to the jungle of Curse right now. It's really not even their own. Two pink wards over the area of Dragon. So looks like they're going to at least try to pressure mid here, a good, a good fight, and then push that Dragon. And specifically, they're having vision control over that right now because Zuna and Bloodwater haven't decided to stop pushing that side lane. This is actually a strange ploy by right. teams. Usually once a 2v1 lane kills a turret, they'll just try and go back and swap lanes. But because they traded 2v1 turrets, they just decided to stay in in 1v2, which really opens up the door for Shen, Nautilus, and TF. Oh, boy, boy, they're going to put Thride on. Ooh, great ultimate coming from Bloodwater. Oh, Depth Charge is going to reach. The Anchor Toss is it there. What? Saint throws it down, maybe uses it to get there. He continues himself towards the fight. If he can get to the left side of the minions, he should have waited it. The Hemo Plague will for sure get the kill. An easy one coming in for Boy, boy. Bloodwater does what he can, but they grab mid. And that just allowed turret pushing galore as soon as Nijaki went off to stop the pressure top lane, Man Cloud just didn't continue to push mid. Edward and Cop as well tried to push this bottom lane, so everyone just went to take things as soon as that fight broke out. Not a single person watched that fight. And you can see it's fearless right now for Man Cloud crew in mid. They're continuously going for the turret with full vision top, bottom, knowing who just went back. They have no worries. This game kind of exploded into a whole bunch of pushing real quickly here. Voiboy Boy is going to just keep the pressure on. It's going to be so hard now for Vulcan to harass him out of lane with all the healing. Oh, and Smithy gets taken down real low on that one. I don't think he expected to see the second member of Curse there to help. The turret in the top will go down, and they didn't really get significant damage on that second tier mid. Yeah, Vulcan just tried to get a little bit aggressive there. Smithy jumped oh. on Jackie right as things were happening, and now Jackie looks to push even more. Oh, wow. Able to trade back that damage perfectly in two spells. You can see the power of Man Cloud now. He only has the Athenes. That's, and it is going straight for that Lich Bane for Jackie now. So, maybe we can recap this real quickly, because everyone yep. just tried to pop their ultimates all at once there. The biggest thing that happened there was the overdive by Vulcan and Curse's capitalization. Since Curse had shown such a bluff pushing up the bottom lane, and since Cop was still there, Vulcan assumed that Edward was with him. That's why they went in on Nijaki, and then they were able to turn that, and that's one of the reasons Curse has now a 900 gold lead. Those pink wards finally coming into play. The gold lead, as you said, swaying back in the favor of Curse. Two turrets to two, so the map pressure is equal on both sides. They're both looking at second tier turrets in the top bottom. And this is very aggressive by Vulcan because they have Zuna split pushing the top lane with no way of getting down bottom. Since Saint has seen this right now, Vulcan's got to get out of there. They lock it down, try to go to the top side, and it looks like he may get out with his life for the Dragon. With May pressure here, they are going back in for it. That was a rather sneaky escape by X Smithy, and they might look to AoE in the pit right here. 
I know X Smithy plus Oriana is a pretty good combo, and Saint Fisher does not have a good track record with Smites. That 900 damage on the Dragon, nobody's gonna go for it. Dragon stays alive, Command Shockwave only on to Saint, and it looks like Jackie could be able to clean up the fight here. Cards go out, hit Sid, leaving with a less than 100. Bloodwater fighting with plans back and forth, but the photosynthesis just isn't enough, and Sid runs away. And Jackie has his ultimate up right now, but he decides not Ooh. to pursue Psycho Sid because Zuna is off on the side and there are more priorities going on right now. That split pushed Tristana. He actually went all the way explosive shot, so he's only two levels into E, but he's still got good damage now to push down those turrets. And it's going to be effective. Second tier turret down for the mid now, and I believe Dragon's still up. These guys really love killing turrets at this point. The Dragon, no one cares about that. No. That was just an instrument for chaos and fighting. St. Fish has peeled around, and I feel like that fight went pretty well for Curse. They got hit by the Shockwave, but then Voiboy Boy is getting very farmed after this one. But because Vulcan took a lot back after it, nothing was really gained by either team after that one ended. One, one, and four on Saint. You see everybody now moving back to Dragon. Vulcan probably gonna grab this one up nice and easy for themselves since they get no contest on that. 400 gold coming in. Looks like that will allow him. So Smithy's gonna be able to create his Golem Spirit Stone, or his Golem Spirit after this. He'll be on par with Saint. Saint going for mobility boots again to try and keep his lanes going. So tank Elise, not yeah. the damage Elise that right. for a few people. And Vulcan was able to take that dragon specifically because the way the lanes were pushing against each other. Since Vulcan had pushed up top lane so heavily with Zuna, Boy Boy had to go and respond to that while Vulcan was running the dragon. And since Curse had counter pushed mid, Vulcan got to deal with that on their way to Dragon, which just gave them extra time to take it. It was a bit of a coincidence and a bit of planning. Gold lead still very close coming into this one at 16 minutes. Every time a turret drops, it is answered evenly by the other team at three and three now, and seven to five are the kills. Curse coming up quite well in these engagements right now, but the fight's going either way still. Seeing where the movement is now, the Dragon's down the bottom half of the map is quite warded, so expect everybody to pretty much stay away from that spot because they know neither team is going to have the privy vision. And Curse needs to wait for Cop to finish his Infinity Edge and then gets to fights. The three components of an Infinity Edge are nothing compared to how good an Infinity Edge actually is. Cop's walking through wards and he's actually a little bit dangerous here. He's trying to get those traps out for safety, but boy, that was a risky little maneuver he pulled there. <laughs> Anything that can get you a little bit of an upper hand in safety as you're farming that lane. They have wards all the way up the bottom side. Vulcan is not leaving an inch of their map pretty much unwarded here, unless they just absolutely don't need to use it. And that's the spot between the wall and each lane to their base. As they make their way down to the bottom, Psycho Sid can play wherever he wants with Stand United up. And the team may be gathering in mid here. They're actually going for somewhat of a Dignitas style here now that they can push all three lanes. It's quite early. And this game is definitely coming out in bursts. We had the level one burst, then the lull. Then we had the turret push yeah. burst, and then the wall, then the dragon fight, and now another lull. It's like these guys are just charging up for fights. Oh man, we used all our summoner spells. All right, let's farm and wait until ultimates are up again. And then they're yeah. all getting used at once because Nijack, he's trying to twist it fade alt and it's always getting countered by Psycho Sid Shen. So there's a lot of counterplay and a lot of waiting with each other. If one of the teams can make either a Jackie alt get burned without countering it by Shen alt and having it work, then we're going to start seeing some mismatched timings. But until then, this game's still going to have lulls and then huge moments of action. So there's the Infinity Edge finished coming out, looking at the gold. It's only 230 gold on Zuna, but he is only two items away from finishing that Infinity Edge, which means two core items. This next fight is definitely a big burst of power for Cop, so they are gonna have to position correctly around him for that. And Vulcan wants this game to get to 40 or 45 minutes. Easy. That's the build path Zuna's taking right now. Just keep split pushing, man. They've seen Double Lift do this on Tristana plenty of times. That's the way Double Lift feeds their AD carry, they give him the free lane farm, and I wonder if Curse is willing to do the same with Cop, because historically for Curse, it's been like Voiboy Boy or even St. Vicious who will go off and split push for the side lane farm. And they're doing that now with Voiboy, Boy, but they're also giving Cop the 1v1 against Zuna. Well, they're literally matching right now. You have two split pushers, your AD carries, and then you have Psycho Sid and your top, Voiboy. Boy. Split pushing in the bottom lane. Shan's got the Sunfire cape, and then they leave the rest of the three in mid to fight because they can siege clear a turret, they can protect everything they need to, and everything's warded up. And there's a lot of danger against a Twisted Fate or a Shen team of 1v1 split pushing as an AD carry because if any of those guys close on you in a 2v1 scenario, right. you're most likely going to die. So these teams almost boldly split pushing against each other, but daring each other to do something. 
Looks like Curse will back up for now. Oh, somewhat. They're not going to have Saint, but nobody has vision of that. Going up. Oh, they go down onto Nijacky. It's only going to be a bit of damage here. I Ooh. thought the Shockwave was going to follow up. That looked like a good amount of damage, but they hold off knowing they have the aggression in this lane. That was a very large bit of damage. What did I say was like, no, nah, I'm not going to go there. And Nijacky <laughs> took over half his health. This gives Vulcan a bit of control, but all they're going to do with it is just give Zuna more time to split push because they know he's no longer at risk of Twisted Fate ultimates. Yeah, they didn't really want anything off of that. And they had ultimates to use, so they're playing for, like I said, just kind of that get advantage, and like you said, keep the farm going. Zuna's now to 190 over 167. Like we said, quite close to that core item, only looking for a new few hundred gold to finish his Infinity Edge. He will have that attack speed, lifesteal, and crit that he's looking for. And he's at level five, so he's got that Q leveled up all the way now. Yeah, 90% attack speed. Three recurve bows worth of Indeed. attack speed if you're Tristana with a max level Q. That's one of the reasons, aside from the incredible range increases Tristana gets late game, that it's such a monster. And that's why Kopp is also trying to go and shut down because Caitlyn needs to be keeping Tristana down at this mid-game point in the game. And that's kind of why Kopp is chasing him around. Oh, oh great depth charge dodge on that one. He is going to get hit up. Ah, oh, Sonya is making it look good. Only takes a bit of wild card damage. Walks back into this fight. Great positioning by Bloodwater there as well to thwart that off. And specifically, Mancloud waited until it was in the air, the gold card, before he's on. He's there. Oh, there's a rocket jump for a barrier. A very nice win for them. With Destiny being used, there's a lot more safety on the map as well for Vulcan on this and their engagements. You can see Psycho Sid and Boy Boy having it out in the top lane. And remember, now that Nijack, he has no Twisted Fate ultimate and Psycho Sid didn't have to burn his Shen ult, this creates an imbalance on the map in the favor of Vulcan as they push mid while Curse pushes top. Well, they make sure they keep tabs on where Psycho Sid is right now. That mid-second tier turret goes down as the siege clear begins in the top lane by Vulcan. The push also in the mid lane by them as they multitask very well here in this Curse game. They have to watch out the flank. Edward is around the side and they do not see him. The Shockwave just missing off the side. The Flash, Edward hits the crescendo and nobody's there to follow up. Ace in the hole blocked by the AD carry and Psycho Sid's there to join the party. It's interesting because Curse still has two people pushing against Dex Smithy and he is solo defending as a low farm Elise. That is amazing by Smithy. Vulcan has kind of put themselves on a string the entire time. We just said it's quite scary to do that in solo lanes with a TF, but they're pressuring so hard, making sure they have the upper hand, and now coming back around. They're not going to let this back. He's pulling him in for the kills. And Smithy is just keeping Curse occupied because everybody on Vulcan is here right now. Psycho Sid's first in the party. Hemo play goes down. Zuna's going to get back. Can't take any more damage because it's amplified. He will live with Barrier on. They continue the fight. Man Cloud picking up the first kill. St. Vicious going to go down. And like usual, there is an answer on the map. Curse is occupying mid lane while Vulcan's trying to kill them. Push, counter push. This is where the Lich Pain comes into effect for Nijak. He's building it out right quick. He has the Zanyas just on the back end. If they can't get out of this one, it's going to be bad. They need that inhibitor turret. They do grab it. Flash the Cocoon up. coming in. Will he decide to jump? Zuna, known to be very aggressive, looks to just help that kill go to Psycho Sid. So after all is said and done, that is three people dead on Curse. But Vulcan didn't get too many extra objectives. Curse is up in turrets right now. The question is, what does Vulcan try to do with this? They may, I think they just saw Cop in the bottom lane. Vulcan could rush that Baron. So many times Vulcan's been at the base and the first time Curse gets a look, they take an inhibitor turret and are now being pressured for the Baron on the game. Zuna having the damage and the attack speed, they'll be able to shred this one down. Then they gotta figure out what to do with it because it's not just gonna be through the front door. There's so many one-sided fights in this game, but then they're just countered because teams are taking and giving one-sided fights. Oh. Vulcan does sneak down the Baroness. Curse tries to check, and then oh, they, hide. they hide in the fog of war. They get the first kill. Doesn't even get a chance to sink. We have pool. St. Vicious goes down after. Those guys didn't even blink. That was a very heady move by Vulcan. Instead of immediately peeling, they knew that Curse was going to come and check. Oh, <laughs> oh. Just on the heels, he ported a little too far out Bloodwater Sark coming in. That Oracle's paying off for them in the vision. And now that they have the Baron buff and still two people dead, Vulcan might go back in for this inhibitor. The last time was repelled by Edward's solo man crescendo, but he's not going to pull that off again. That turret is too low. And it looked like Cop was just trying to get to that back door. Is that turret low? Because he saw at least that turret is low. He was trying to get it. So he is thwarted off of that, but Vulcan is pushed out of the base. So great job by Curse not having Cop to still hold that tight. And now both teams do have exposed inhibitors, but I'd say the more vulnerable inhibitor is obviously Curse since Vulcan has the Baron buff sitting yep. on everyone. 
Not only did they get the gold from that Baron buff, they equalized the turrets, and they're going to be picking up this dragon. So a game that in gold was very close to even a couple seconds ago is now 4,000 up as Vulcan picked up their second dragon in the game. And you can see the curse still feels like, not that they have, they're on the back foot right now, but they need to ward up more. Vulcan has how many wards in their jungle? One pink ward behind Baron to make sure it wasn't sneakily taken. Curse says we need to know what's going on in all of our jungle because we're being aggressed on right now. And those are the smart words for Curse. The big thing that's going to happen now is Vulcan's going to try to make rotations through Curse's jungle and then probably get out those bottom lane turrets. You got to see now, Cop and Edward, the lane they're in here, all of the turrets are up in that lane, whereas the rest of Curse's turrets are destroyed. So if Vulcan wants to pick up some easy gold, right. they just need to go down there and grab them. That's one of the reasons Curse is warded so heavily there, but I don't see how Curse can defend this. Cop has got to get out of the way. They've pretty much just put a banana of wards across the entire line. Seeing Vulcan come in, it doesn't look like they really will have the manpower to force down to this. Cop will be forced to get off away from this turret. And I wonder if Vulcan is overcommitting a little bit to these turrets because we see actually Jackie and St. Fish is trying to counter push up mid. That's one of the big reasons Zuna yeah. has just been held in the mid lane because Vulcan fell for this once before when they sent everyone to get some kills. They kept Zuna back this they time. They also have their top lane being pushed right quick past River and that's going to be at the turret. He will not decide to go. Void Boy looks like he will decide to stay there. He knows his 1v1 potential. Quickly farm up Golans. Probably try to take a turret. Zuna, depth charge into middle, but he won't have a follow-up from the gold card He's coming in. in. Turns it on. Is it going to be in range? Not enough, but they force the flash. This will be a fight. It's a red buff on the Saint. Oh, he turns on the wild card. Just take the damage and keep going. And the fight is also continuing bottom lane. They get the kill going on the cop. He never left the turret for some reason. Saint goes down as well. Boy Boy came in with the I think I can mentality, thinking he could help. And he also is forced to flash like Nijacky. Edward goes down in the bottom. And Vulcan is just wreaking havoc on the entire map. They're just chasing everyone on Curse down. They outplayed them here because they had the Baron buff while all this was happening. And they responded to Curse's response. That's why they get this inhibitor and that's why they got the three kills adapting to the current strategy vulcan really coming out on top of that one they're going to go ahead and take another inhibitor turret and look to take the inhibitor they're really tight on time though and psycho sid is so tanky right now look sunfire kite plus aegis he's just eating that turret's hit and not caring about it that gives vulcan so much extra map control and it really puts curse in a bind the Void Boy's got to be careful in these fights. Picking that, not that it's a huge and it's a detriment, but he picked that into Tristana. And those explosive shots have always been on him with Grievous Wounds. And it's completely shredding the fact that he can stay in the fight forever as Vladimir. Yeah, it's definitely stopping Void Boy, especially since he rushed the Spellvamp Spirit. You can see Curse trying to desperately hold up this last thing. There's still a few seconds of this Baron buff left on Vulcan. I wonder if Vulcan's going to go and look for a fight here because they have Zyra ult, they have Mandatory Clouds ult. All the previous advantages they got, they got because of map positioning, not because of a fight, so they might go. Zuna's got that range, they hit it from outside, the Anchor Toss just misses. You can see through that flurry of spells, we'll see, oh, very nice, setting off the cooldown on the ace in the hole. Cute little move by Xsmithy, he may be 0-2 and 7, but he's been in the right spots, he's defended properly, and he's lived in the right situations here to really help Vulcan pulling ahead here. But it's still just the same old scoreline for Vulcan. Man Cloud's got the most kills. Zuna's getting late game. He's just building up items on Tristana. He's got his last whisper. He could still use the 40 minute build, but he's getting pretty close. And Psycho Sid's having a hell of a game. It's the solo laners for Vulcan against Curse. Seem to come out with good scores in almost all these games. They didn't. I'd say they got a little help. Great play coming from yeah. Mudwater and the rest of the team. You know, Smithy was in those lanes. But St. Vicious was too. It was another hug and soak up experience, and it really all came down to, like you said, when the bursts happen and who was ready for it more. And speaking of people just helping out the solo laners, I love X Smithy building that Zeke's Herald. Even though it's just for Tristana, that is a super underused item. It's still going to give him cooldown reduction and health on Elise. He's mm -hmm. going to be able to use that, but it's mainly just helping Zuna get even crazier because Curse does not have a good dive line to get to Zuna. Zuna's going to be able to shred people down with his Tristana build, and that Zeke's just adds to that. Stand United coming up in just a few seconds. Destiny is up as well, but Nijaki's cleanse is down. They're actually missing a lot of their defensive summoners right now. The flash is down, that barrier is down for Cop. You're looking at those escapes being up on the side of Vulcan. Saint trying to go in as the team there to follow up the gap close. Wild goes, goes or rather, Stranglethorn goes out, able to pop up Boy Boy, and he's pulled out of the fight. Mandatory Cloud and the rest of the team dance this one off, and they're now going to re-enter in. Boy Boy, one more shot, actually takes the shot. 
from the movement of Mandatory Cloud's Q, and it looks like they're gonna take a lot of the base on this one. And Vulcan attacked Boy Boy so well during that fight, he never even got his Vladimir alt off. Vulcan got fairly low. With the Vlad alt in there, it could have been a lot closer, and that might be why his curse is trying to re-engage. Zuna playing it really smart, has to rocket jump out here. They have the minion wave, they did not catch anyone, and they're all quite low, so they're gonna back off onto this one. They know the power is still there from Curse, giving them that respect, and they'll be back for another try. And it was an inhibitor game, so that was yeah. everything right for Vulcan there. It was a touchy fight, though. I'd say that was a smart engage by Curse, and if Boy Boy wouldn't have gotten locked down so well by Elise and Oriana, he would have been able to maybe turn the tides of that fight. Giving damage amp and the huge alt nuke from Vladimir's Hemoplague would have crushed down Vulcan in that fight, but after that fight, it might not work again since two inhibitors may be too much to come back from. And you know, something I really like here, I'm not sure if you fully mentioned it, but you did say the Zeke's on Elise. Mm -hmm. But that, that 0, 2, and 7, he doesn't have the bulwark. That went into the hands of 4, 0, and 7, Psycho Sid, who did have the money in his yes. bank. And they said, you know, what can I build to still help the utility? So that's even cooler that he got the Zeke's and was given the bulwark up to, up to Sid. Yeah, even though double bulwark is good for the two holders, this gives more overall team gold as Vulcan sneaks down another Baron. I wonder if they pull the inside trick twice. Oh my god, oh! they do it again! This time with the taunt! They haven't even used the Strangle Thorns! They try to continue and go, the Grasping Root, rather. The Strangle Thorns is up, but they don't get in range for it for Blood. Water, Zuna taking out Saint. They could continue this fight on. And they just look to push a lot here. They're going to have two waves of super minions coming into the base. Saint Fidget isn't the prime defender, oh. but if Vulcan can catch anything else, they might end. They still got that movement. Blue buff onto Oriana. She's going to be oh, able to they get that Oh, a very nice taunt onto Jackie. The cleanse just came up and it goes down along with him. They're going to continue on to the Nexus turrets here. They give the magic an armor to Zuna, or Psycho Sid rather, with the command protect. They look for the last inhibitor turret and the last inhibitor. And this is Vulcan League of Legends. They're cleaning oh. up everything they can before ending this game. That wasn't very Vulcan, but at least, at least they're getting the inhibitor. A crescendo to the mouthpiece takes down Mandatory Cloud, and we're going to see if Vulcan can really just kind of have and run amok inside the base of Curse right here. And Zuna's just jumping in for this fight. They're taking down the Nexus turrets as they battle. Zuna trying to keep his focus onto those turrets. You can see the rest of the team. Xmithy taking damage. Now Psycho Sid might bring himself in to take damage. They know it's been a little bit too much. Will it get some, oh, very nice grasping root towards the backside and Boy Boy's kept in the base. They got all the Nexus turrets down, but there was a threat of them getting aced in there and maybe giving Curse a small window back in the game. This is how Vulcan plays. It's not super flashy. They didn't go for the fun ending. They said, all right, we won this if we don't do anything silly. Everyone back out, farm up. They even pinged the dragon. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go shop because they're all sitting on 2,000 and 1,000 gold after all the fights and turrets they just took. And Vulcan will come back soon when they have the double super minion waves in every lane and end it. And you can just see how much pressure, if you look at the map, it's just symmetrically pushing everywhere. There are no minion waves even leaving the base of Curse right now. Vulcan has put continuous pressure on Curse for the past six, seven minutes. You don't usually see that unless a team hasn't been able to leave their base for quite some time. And it's been quite a great turnaround for Vulcan as well since they lost that level one battle and then have really just been pulling it back ever since. There was a few mind games where Curse was able to get turrets, but Vulcan has out mind game Curse more so than anything. I wouldn't count, call out any amazing mechanical plays they pulled off. They've obviously played very solid, but nothing spectacular happened in this game. This was Vulcan playing their game, understanding Curse, and positioning themselves properly throughout the map. You know what gets even scarier about this Vulcan composition? As we said, they're more than happy to take it to 40 minutes, because that's when they really get stronger. So mm -hmm. being on their upper curve from that that U curve, being on the upwards, upward slant yep. early in the game, has shown exponentially. Now 10,000 gold in the lead, six turrets in the lead, and half of the kills on the side of Curse. And half of Curse's attention here is gonna be spent just clearing minions. So this is a nearly impossible hold at their Nexus against Vulcan. Siege, oh, they go right for oh, Cobb. Man. That's pretty much all the Siege clear they have for a turret right there. Mandatory Cloud goes for the Zanias, dodges quite a bit of damage. Boy, boy, where is Zuna coming out of this fight? He is able to get some good damage down on the bottom side of your screen. Look continuing out. to clean up, healing up almost a chunk, uh, just such a chunk of health, rather, on every shot. The Nexus to go down, and Vulcan carrying momentum of Cloud9 win to this one over Curse, 20 to nine. Not before X Smithy sacrificed some KD at the end there, but third victory of the year for Vulcan against Curse. They're just asserting their dominance over those guys, and despite all the delays, despite having to move to another room, and despite a level one, Vulcan came out on top. 
They played that one super strong. They took away a lot of things that were familiar to Curse. They took away that cop Draven that he's kind of, I, I'd say relying on actually going through the, the, the plays of him. There maybe been a Varus and some Ezreals to start off the summer split for him. But then it became yeah. Draven. And yeah. for this one, we definitely saw a little bit of a falter when it wasn't. Yeah, you always put yourself into those little traps when you're learning new champions, forgetting your old ones sometimes. So that was tactically a victory for Vulcan, I'd have to say. So really well played. Vulcan was, like I said, they're a team about momentum. Mm -hmm. They had the Tristana that they wanted to get to Zuna, which we were a little surprised it was able to get through since so it's been... So late as well. Yeah. It was like the fourth, fourth pick, pick for Vulcan. Fourth pick coming in, and then we kind of saw the Vladimir pick come in after that, which mm -hmm. obviously Tristana's E. I'm not going to say that's a huge counter to that, so we'll just no. wipe it out. But that game in general, like we saw Vulcan playing against Cloud9, they were ahead in the beginning, and they know how to hold a lead. And if we have, when we have an interview with these guys, we're going to have to ask them whether it was just kind of business as usual for Vulcan, because it. this was probably the closer Curse game they've had, because Curse had a lot of really yeah. solid plays in this one. But they got the picks they wanted because they have a super diverse champion pool. They were able to adapt on the fly, ban out Curse, and just take their stuff. And then they executed. Even when Bloodwater was forced on a Zyra, which we haven't seen him play that much of, they made it work out just right because it stopped the Curse dive. They took away exactly what Curse wanted to do for, to them. And you know it's something we, we, we should keep a ch uh, tab on, if mm -hmm. I know the words I want to use, uh, is when these happen, when these fights kind of fluster teams in the beginning of a match, mm -hmm. what is the role, not the role of that team, but how is the mentality? How do they play out? Do they do different things in other games? Because it seems mm -hmm. like if Vulcan can throw a team off kilt or kilter right on the beginning, Cloud9 couldn't handle it. Curse couldn't handle yeah. it. You know, maybe you found your calling if you can just get in a team's head right away and throw them off tilt. There's a chance that Vulcan is one of the best teams in North America in Champion Select because even Cloud9 was saying they're really hard for us specifically in the pick and ban phase because of their versatility and the way they can attack everyone's team composition and style specifically. It's definitely got a way on your mind when you can think, oh man, something could go wrong here and then we have mm -hmm. 40 minutes to play. Then we got to play game. <laughs> All right, everyone, we got to take a short break, but when we return, Vulcan Psycho Sid will join us to talk about their dominating win. And then it's our second match of the day, Velocity Esports versus Team Solo Mid. Week four of the NALCS Summer Split will return right after this.